Hello friends, you must have encountered difficulty in understanding the calcaneum radiographs and even during the intraoperative fluoroscopy. Sometimes it is very difficult to understand what is going on. So in this presentation, I will be discussing about the calcaneum radiographs that are conventionally required and we will be knowing what are the important findings in the radiography and fluoroscopy to understand the calcaneum morphology. So the calcaneum when seen from the lateral side looks like this. So the posterior thick part of the calcaneum is the calcaneum reprocity. It provides attachment to the tendinoeculus proximally here and to the plantar fascia over here. Sometimes a spur is also formed in these regions. And then there is posterior facet which is the articular facet for the subtalar joint. This part articulates with the talus proximally. So the talus undersurface is like this and this posterior facet articulates perfectly with that undersurface. On the medial side, this part is the sustentaculum telli. Anteromedial part of the talar head articulates with the sustentaculum telli. This is the anterior facet. The lower part of the talar head rests on this part. So the talus is a curved bone. It starts from here and ends till here and anterior to this is the navicular. So the talus, the major part of the talar undersurface articulates with the posterior facet. The anteromedial part articulates with the sustentaculum talli and the inframedial part of the talar head articulates with the anterior facets. This part of the calcaneum is the anterior process. Just anterior to this angulation, this whole area is the sinus tarsi, which is a non-articular space between talus and calcaneum. And here originates the extensor digitorum brevis. This area is also important to visualize the posterior facet whenever we are approaching the calcaneum through the sinus tarsi approach. When we see calcaneum from the above, we see this is the lateral part and this is the medial part. The posterior facet we have already seen in the previous image. This is kind of an end-on view. Our viewing angle is directly parallel to the posterior facet. And now the anterior facet is becoming more clear. This is anterior facet. So the under surface of the tailor head rests on this part. And this is sustentaculum telli. The anteromedial part of the tailor head articulates with sustentaculum telli. And again, this is anterior process, which is just anterior to the angulation. That means the junction of the posterior facet with the anterior part of the calcaneum. And this area is the insertion of the tendinoeculus. Now the medial side. So medial side, again, we have tuberosity. This is sustentaculum telli. And you can see there are two grooves. This deeper groove is for flexor hallucis longus. And this groove which is just medial to it is for TBLS posterior muscle. And again, attachment for the plantar fascia here and the anterior process, whole of the anterior process. So now conventionally, we operate calcaneum in lateral position. So this will be the bony anatomy when seen in lateral position. And the lateral view is performed by going orthogonal to the horizontal plane when the foot is lying in the horizontal plane. In this position, we will get a lateral view of the ankle because the fluoroscopic beam is passing orthogonal to the ankle. Had it been passing in this direction, we would have got an AP view. In this view, we will get a lateral one. So this will be the lateral view we will get. Now before going to the fracture, we will just need to know what all structures we are seeing in the radiograph. So just revise. This is the tuberosity and this is the posterior facet just like this. So this is a posterior facet. This is another line just over the posterior facet. This actually represents the sustentaculum telli. So this straight line is the sustentaculum telli, which is this part. Then comes the anterior process, this whole anterior process, which is actually this part. Now coming to the fracture line. To know whether the joint is aligned or not, you need to see the articulation of the posterior facet with talus. So the calcaneal posterior facet line should always be parallel to the undersurface of talus. There is a fracture line here. And if we see on the actual bone, the fracture line will be like this. That will be entering into the posterior facet. But here the fracture is minimally displaced. Why? Because you see the congruency of the subtalar joint is still maintained. The posterior facet line is almost parallel to the undersurface of the talus. There's a minimal displacement of this fracture. You can say less than a millimeter in this area. Now see this part. Now see the undersurface of talus is there, but you see the posterior facet is not there. There should have been a parallel line along the undersurface of the talus, but it's not there. The white faint line you can see, it is still there. That means sustentaculum talli is intact. The sustentaculum talli represents the constant fragment of the calcaneum. That means it is rarely displaced. Why? Because of the strong ligamentous attachment in this area. So even when the posterior facet is grossly displaced, you'll find that the sustentaculum telli line is always there in the radiographs. Whenever you are doing open reduction of calcaneum, search for the bone of the sustentaculum telli. Then use that as template for realigning remaining fragments of the posterior facet. Now, if we see the actual picture of this fracture, 
so that will be like this the posterior facet is actually lying downwards here it should be aligned to the under surface of the talus here so we have to reduce it back to its original position the original position will be somewhere here and that will be parallel to the tail so this is a kind of tongue fracture in which the posterior facet is going downwards and the tongue fragment is moving upward so the reduction maneuver will be like this we have to joystick to realign this whole facet to the under surface of the talus and when the joint congruence is restored that means the reduction is good now we have reduced this posterior facet back to the position under the talus and after reduction you see there is this improvement in the subtalar joint space the line the posterior facet is now aligned with the under surface of the talus but still you see the congruence is still not fully restored why because the line is not parallel to the talus that means some degree of malalignment is still there it needs to be tilted more proximally again in this image you can see there's another parallel line which is actually the sustenum talli which represents this part now the reduction maneuver has been re-performed and now you see the lines are now almost parallel and then then the surgeon has transfixed the posterior facet with the talus before definitive fixation to maintain the reduction. To maintain the reduction. Now you see this, this zoomed in view shows the perfect restoration of the posterior facet. The same patient which we have seen in the previous image. And this line again, I have told you there should not be any confusion. This line is the sustainable tear. So sometimes the residents get confused that this the reduction is not good. Why? Because there are two joint lines visible. So you need to be careful. This line is different and this line is different. Whenever you are reducing the posterior facet, it should realign with the subtalar joint. Don't care about this line. It is actually sustainable tear. Now coming to more images. Now confusion occurs because of the various degree of tilt in lateral position. So when you get a perfect lateral view, you will be seeing only the posterior facet. There should not be any line visible here because now the beam of fluoroscopy is passing perfectly parallel to the posterior facet in lateral view. And here when you do slightest external rotation, that means the medial part now comes in way of your fluoroscopic beam, then this line will be visible. So by doing an internal rotation maneuver, you can actually get a good lateral radiograph in which there will be no line visible over the posterior facet because the posterior facet will come in way of the beam directly and the sustentaculum telli will be hidden behind this part. You see, this is the perfect lateral view in which the in which you are not able to see the sustentaculum telli line over the posterior facet. It is actually hidden in this area somewhere here. In sight as external rotation, you'll be able to appreciate the sustentaculum telli line like in this view. By doing further external rotation, it will become more prominent just like the views we had seen earlier as we see in this part. It is more prominent. Why? Because the view is in excess of external rotation. Again, there are some more variations of imperfect lateral view like when the foot is lying downwards. That means it is not parallel to the horizontal line. It is actually below the horizontal plane. That means the sustainable telli will appear more proximal to the posterior facet because the posterior facet part is tilted downwards but your C arm beam or fluoroscopy beam is lying perpendicular to the horizontal plane like in this picture you can see the sustentaculum telli is lying proximal to the posterior facet and when the level is further down there will be gross distortion of the lateral view and you will not be able to see things properly because the sustentaculum telli shadow will hinder your lateral view but still whatever the view be only thing you need to focus is that there should be a line which is parallel to the under surface of talus. Now if we see the calcaneum from the top and our viewing angle is in line with the posterior facet then we will see this kind of picture. Now this is the under surface of talus and this is the posterior facet when seen from the above and this line is the sustentaculum talli which is articulating with the anteromedial part of the tailor head. This is the posterior facet and this is the sustentaculum talli. The anteromedial part of the tailor head is articulating with this part and the under surface of the talus is articulating with the posterior facet. Now when we perform the axial radiograph in which the fluoroscopy beam passes orthogonal to the posterior facet in anteroposterior direction then we get a view like this in which we see two lines. One is for the posterior facet and another is for the sustentaculum so don't get confused when you see two parallel lines. Why? Because two parallel lines in different plane do not mean that the fracture is not reduced. You can tilt the fluoroscopic beam to get a view in which both appear in same plane but that's not required. Just focus on this part. There should be one line which represents the under surface of the talus and there should be one line which represents the posterior facet. Now I'll show you the technique for getting a good axial view. In lateral position, the fluoroscopic beam 
needs to be parallel to the posterior facet. In lateral position, you position your C-arm like a lateral view at the foot end and rotate it in this direction so that the fluoroscopic beam passes parallel to the posterior facet. Or alternatively, what you can do, you can keep the limb in prone position like this and get an axial view like this. You can just rotate this console like this. Once you are parallel to the posterior facet, then you'll be able to see the view like this, in which the posterior facet will be orthogonal to the fluoroscopic beam. So now coming to some examples of the axial view. So you see there are two lines. One is this line and one is this line. One is here for the sustained column telli and one is this line which is the line for the posterior facet. So this line and this line need not to be in same plane because they are different regions. One is sustained column telli and one is the posterior facet. But in posterior facet everything should be at the same level. There should not be any distortion here. Don't get confused with this part. This is nothing but the fifth metatarsal which is coming in our view. And another image again you see this part is the sustained column telli and this part is the posterior facet which is articulating with the under surface of the talus. So there are again two lines but both of them are parallel to the under surface of talus. So the most critical thing in all kind of views is to see the under surface of the talus. Now another view. Again this line is sustained tail and this line is the posterior facet. You see the under surface of talus here and this is the posterior facet lying almost parallel to the under surface of talus. This is fifth metatarsal. Don't need to get confused. And again in this view also you see this image is sustained tail but here you see this is the under surface of the talus here and this fragment is actually angulated. It is not uniform because because it is not reduced properly. So it needs to be correctly reduced to get a view like this. There is no standard AP view for calcaneum. Lateral view we have already seen that we need to focus on this part. The posterior facet it needs to be parallel to the under surface of talus and in AP view we are not able to see anything. Why? Because the tarsal bones come in way of the calcaneum and they distort whole of the view. Now if we rotate the limb internally to around 40 to 45 degrees then we will be able to appreciate the subtalar joint you see. And what else? If we keep our viewing angle slightly in here we will be able to see this part of the posterior facet and if we keep our viewing angle more in fear that means we are seeing from downwards towards the upward direction then we will be able to see the articulation of talus with this part so this line actually represents our viewing angle and if we tilt our viewing angle more downwards we will be able to see the congruence of this lower part so by changing our viewing angle, we are able to appreciate the congruence of the subtalar joint at different levels of the posterior facet. So these viewing angles when used in fluoroscopy represent the broadened views. So these lines are actually representing different viewing angles for fluoroscopy. So all these views are actually performed in 40 degree of internal rotation, but the viewing angle in cephalar direction is tilted from 10 to 40 degree. So this is the way we get a broader view by tilting the fluoroscopic beam in different directions with the limb in 40 degree of internotation. So don't get confused, 40 degree of internotation is for viewing the subtalar area and different viewing angles are to view the different zones of the posterior facet under the talus. So the first view in which the tilt is around 10 degree will give you a picture like this. So what we are seeing here is the top part of the posterior facet which in this view is lying congruently with the under surface of talus. When the viewing angle of the fluoroscopic beam is 20 degree we get a view like this which represents the mid superior part of the posterior facet and when the viewing angle is around 30 degree we get a view like this which represents the mid lower part of the posterior facet and when the angle is tilted to 40 degree we get a view like this which represents the lowest part of the posterior facet. So at the end I would like to say whatever view you are getting in calcaneum just focus on the posterior facet congruence with the under surface of the talus. It should always be congruent in any view like in the lateral view. In the axial view also it should be parallel to the under surface of the talus and in, and in broad view also it should be parallel to the under surface of the talus.